Um, we control the timing of herbicide applications. This is something that comes up year after year after year with growers. <coughs> We've, uh, you'll show up at somebody's farm and they're telling their cow is dying and not doing very good and you'll go out there and it's in a, just a mad thatch, cheap, ryegrass, volunteer wheat, whatever we've got growing out there. And there's no way the crop's going to survive that, you know. And they got in their mind, well, somebody said you have to wait eight weeks after planting the spray. Well, when you've got competition in this crop, you spray it. I don't care if it's a tiny, you know, four leaf plant this, this high on the ground. If you've got these cereal grain infestations coming in that's giving competition in this crop, you knock it out. If you've got to go in there with two fall applications, go, you know, Catch it when it's small, 11 ounces, wait two or three weeks, hit it with another 11 ounces, and then 22 in the, in the spring. Spread your applications out, but do not let this crop have competition because it's going to cost you money in the long run. In the, in the spring when it's bolted and this is tall, nothing's going to have grip. You know. Don't, but, don't wait for getting all your flushes of junk up before you spray. It'll get you every time. So sometimes in the fall, it'll rain at the right time, everything comes up. You get it killed out, the canopy's over, and you're done. Um, sometimes when it's dry in the fall, like it usually is, uh, there'll be a, a set of cheap volunteer weeds will come up. And if you don't take care of it, if you wait two or three weeks, it'll take the moisture away from this little shallow, don't see the cold, cold leaf, and you're done. You're going to just plant right away. You want to get those into winter and then let the nature thin them out, have, or if it goes down the road. But, and then also, you got to be quick, and then other people will call and say, you know, my, my stuff canopy. When it takes off and grows, it will grow fast. And it will shade, especially for seven and a half inch rows, they'll shade over. I mean, you can look at it three days later, it's canopied over. Everything's underneath that. There's really no need to spray then. I mean, you, you've waited too long. So be prepared to spray and be prepared to add it at the daytime. Talk to your custom applicators, get your stuff ready if you're a self applicator. That gets people every time. On spring application, it's before bolt, not after. When you see this stuff green up, uh, people are hairing around about the pastures, you know, there's tiny things there, there's robins around. You get the idea that something's going to take off. Don't wait, this stuff can bolt and, 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 and you're, you're off label, right? Then you're in cause economic loss. So be prepared that this is going to be talking to producers south of you that they were doing this last week or whatever. Know how this is progressing north. You use your NIS, use your AMS, put it in the tank, what it calls for. Don't try to get by on two gallons of water if you need to be spraying ten. Let's do this right. You know, we got a profit to bring us in four to six hundred dollars an acre of income. Why don't we spend a couple bucks on it? Bob, would you like to cover some pre planting about this? Yeah, um, a lot of extra nitrogen in the fall can lead to fall growth, like we talked earlier, which I've seen a lot of grass on. This has been recommended since the beginning, a third of the fall, two thirds of the spring. Uh, in the past seven years, I've tried to put a whole bunch on. I told you, you know, I mean, early on, save money on nitrogen products because anhydrous is cheaper and it's cost me yield, it's cost me serious dollars. So, we're soil testing and trying to get what it needs and just not anything excessive in the fall, not excessive pre planting in case you have the October and November that's open and wet and it can just grow and get away from you. Um, phosphorus. Um, you know, it's the same as wheat. Uh, if the soil is somewhat dry, uh, I tell people don't even put it there. You're in furrow. I mean, if you've got a two by two band or a one by three band, yeah, I'll do whatever you need to do. But um, if you got a decent phosphorus soil test, I, I, would, I would advise against being putting phosphorus in the soil unless you have good soil moisture conditions. You can just have too much seedling burn. Uh, don't ever put K in contact with the seed. Uh, on top dress, um, when it says two thirds in the spring, we really mean the heart of winter. Um, that's just the way it's been labeled forever. I would like to have it on. Ours is on already. It was on before we got this little snow cover and we start building it in. And we want the bulk of the nitrogen load and your sulfur, um, as thiosol is what I prefer, down in December, early January, to start catching some snows, catching some sleet, whatever, to try and get this into the soil moisture into the root zone. Um, I'm not a urea fan when it comes to top dress of canola, and I would stay clear of that even if it's a few dollars cheaper. It's like what Jeff said a little bit ago, it's a crop with a lot of money, let's do it right. Um, sulfur, whatever your soil tests say, um, we believe in 15 to 20 pounds of sulfur, um, even if they're adequate. 
this is with the research we've got from the people in Canada that are growing this. We, we go talk to the higher yielding people in Canada, North Dakota. Uh, first thing to say is you've got to have a, a good sulfur load. And don't use elemental sulfur or ships like that. They're going to break down in two or three years. Go with biosol, something's going to take effect in this crop. You know your timing of it. We want the sulfur on now so that we're sure to get it, hopefully with some rain, through the rip zone by the time we go reproductive. Uh, waiting until the end of February 1st of um, March to put sulfur on to me is waiting too late. It can be too muddy, you can have trouble getting on, or maybe you don't get enough rainfall in the next 10, 12 days to put it in the soil moisture before you reproduce it. So give yourself another 45, 50 days and put it on now. Boron, uh, I'll let Jeff talk about that. I've been doing tissue sampling for a little over a year now, um, trying to find out what we're negative in or what we can be needing. Uh, boron, zinc, sulfur, We've even done some magnets and some of these things, and um, we need to do some more testing. We're, we're finding some benefits, but it's not conclusive yet to say. But I truly believe that boron is a key component in the production of canola. It's going to increase your winter survival. It's going to give you more blooms. You're going to retain your blooms. I mean, canola produces is a very prolific blooming plant. You've seen how yellow this stuff gets. <coughs> But most of these yellow pods that you see on it abort and fall off on the ground. They're not a viable seed pond. Boron is going to make those flowers stay on longer and increase potting. More pods you have, more yield you're going to have. So, you know, I, I would, my blanket recommendation, and I feel very safe giving it, is apply a half pound of boron either in the fall of pink vegetative growth or in the spring after green them. But you have to have that green plant actively growing to absorb what they call their great product. Utilize tissue samples to correct deficiencies. Uh, Bob and I are, are both heavy users of tissue sampling. That gives you a snapshot of what's in that plant the day you pick those leaves and send it to the lab. In the spring, after green up, after your soil warms up a little bit, I mean, don't do it at, at first green up. Give it up, you know, a couple weeks. Get our soil temperatures up enough to where we're mineralizing our potash and our, and our phos, or you're going to show deficiency in the test. That will tell us what we need to do. Do we need more nitrogen? That gives us time to go out and put it on. If we don't need nitrogen, why apply it? If we need some other micro or macronutrient, that utilizing this tissue sample lets us put on the crop what we need to put on to maximize our yield, maximize our income without overspending. Why spend a dollar on something you don't need? Let's take that dollar and put it on something that our tissue test shows us that we need and maximize our yield potential.